We continue to talk about two-way interactions. So in this segment, we talk about two-way interactions between two indicator variables. And the example is a housing data set in Pittsburgh, where we are regressing the price of houses on various variables. And I have selected two indicator variables here to, to explain the concept. Shady side is a neighborhood. It's an expensive neighborhood actually in Pittsburgh. And so there's an indicator for shady side. And air conditioning, yes or no, is whether or not the house has air conditioning. That is not completely obvious in the old houses in Pittsburgh, as it might be, say, in some modern neighborhood. All right, so if we run the regression on the price of the house, as assessed by the county, on these two indicator variables, we see that both of them are significant, and both of them have a plus sign here, so if you have air central air conditioning, you have a higher house value on average. And if you live in shady side, you have a higher house value on average too. And so, yeah, they're significant. $94,000 more for living in shady side versus not. Hmm. And central air conditioning is even more, 109,000. That's also in part because air conditioning is a marker for all kinds of things or lack of air conditioning is a marker for um, for lack of other things also probably, right? And we have only two variables in the model. R squared, 17, 18%, not that great, but two indicator variables, what can you expect? So the model, the two lines have to be parallel, right? Because, well, we don't have an interaction in there. They have to be parallel. So if I go from zero to one here on central air conditioning, then I have from an average price here that goes to a higher average price. And if I go uh, from not having central air conditioning to central air conditioning, and I am in shady side, that increase here from here to here has to be the exact same one. So the, even though there are no intermediate values here, if you draw a line, they still have to be parallel. Okay. so. You might wonder as why did I put in central air conditioning in here, zero one, and then other neighborhood and shady side. So this is another zero one, but I have that in the plot. I could switch those two things and I could put neighborhood in here, shady side versus not, and no central air versus central air here. The lines would be a little different, but the message would be identical. So we're not getting a different message by deciding which variable goes on the x-axis. Here is the stata code for completeness. And if we now, so before we had the model-based estimates, and now if I look at the raw data, and I just look at the four averages for shady side, not central air conditioning, and I plot the average in here, just in, 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 the, in the data. So we have four subsets for the four points, and for each subset of the data, I plot the average. And if I see this, then of course, what I do see is that, well, uh, the lines don't really look parallel, right? And therefore we have an interaction, or at least we might have an interaction. It's not clear that it's significant. The more, uh, the steeper the angle is at which these two lines um, intersect or eventually intersect over here, the more likely it is that there is an interaction, but we can only see there's a potential. We don't actually know whether it's significant, but we can create one and look, tell, let the model tell us whether it's significant or not. Yeah, so here I'm just arguing that I could have switched around the x-axis with the second indicator variable and it doesn't change anything in interpretation. We are creating the interaction just as before, we are multiplying the two variables. In the example in the last segment, I had an indicator variable and a continuous variable, but for the computer, it's all the same. You just multiply two variables. And then what is the meaning of the interaction? Well, if either one of those indicators is zero, then the whole thing is zero. 
if they are both one, so if I have air conditioning and the neighborhood is shady side, then I get the interaction here to be one. Here, I'm creating the variable, just multiplying them, then I'm regressing, just adding this third variable in here, and down there you get the effects. Now, what is significant? Central air conditioning is significant and adds now $124,000 on average to the house price. Shady side is still significant and adds $153,000 on average. Those values have changed a little bit more, a little bit, and the interaction is not significant. So we don't really want to interpret the coefficient. These two coefficients have changed because we have a different coefficient in here, right? But it's not significant. That is a little bit surprising because really the two lines didn't look like they were approximately parallel. They were really at quite an angle, right? So let's look at the data. That's always a good thing. So before I just had this segment that now corresponds to the lower third of the plot. And um, we had quite an angle. If I look at the actual house prices in here, the house prices uh, have quite a range. Right? So the angle appears less steep now because I have expanded the plot to cover higher values. So there is there's a fairly high variability here. And it just turns out that the, the angle or, or the, well, the interaction is not significant. What does red mean here? So red What is red? I'm not completely clear what is red here. All right, be that as it may, you will notice that there's a bit of jittering here. There are values above and below one and above zero here. So I have added a bit of noise simply that you see the data rather than it's all obscured in one big line and we don't know how many underlying points there are. All right. So we have now again different models depending on whether the interaction is turned on and depending on whether the two indicators are turned on. So basically we have four models because there are two indicators. So we get two times two equals four models and then the interaction uh, turns on or off depending on whether they're both indicators are turned on. All of them have beta zero, there's beta one, beta two, and then the interaction model also adds beta three. Yeah, and it's a poor model, right? There's no continuous X variable. It, these are just basically the modeling the four averages. What research question would we have? The research question here might be, does central air conditioning affect the price differently depending on the neighborhood? So affect the price differently, effect is expressed by the beta. So is the beta for central air conditioning different if I'm in shady side, one neighborhood, as opposed to I'm not in shady side? Now, we only for neighborhood had two levels, shady side and not. If I have 10 levels, 10 different neighborhoods, or so 20, the question would be exactly the same. All right, now we know about interactions with two indicators. This concludes this segment.